Welcome, I'm Lee Cowan, and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places, and things we bring you every weekend on Sunday morning. You may recognize Nick Lachey as lead singer of boy band 98 Degrees, and you might know his wife Vanessa Lachey as the host of MTV's Total Request Live. But now the duo is telling Jonathan Vigliotti about their relationship and a new role, co-hosting the hit Netflix dating show, Love is Blind. Husband and wife celebrity hosts Nick and Vanessa Lachey call Love is Blind a new take on an old way of courting. Welcome to Love is Blind. What I think is so fascinating is it's how love used to be. People used to, like, mm. if we're going back, back, it's sending letters. And then it was letters and a phone call. And you always courted this person. And there's just conversation. I mean, you, you get to know someone so intimately, so quickly. I remember specifically someone saying, I dated this girl for three years and I've already talked to people in these walls more than I have with my girlfriend of three years. Later in the show, Nick and Vanessa Lachey on how marriage counseling has improved their relationship. What made you think of marriage counseling? Why did you need to start marriage counseling? I think it's, it's just smart for everybody to do. I mean, it, there's- What was the day? I remember the day, you remember the day when we decided to do it? When, well, and it, it's very sweet, you did. Oh, oh, I said, I, yeah, I think I said, we can, we can be unstoppable if we get out of our own way. Get out of our way. own way. Then Martha Teichner takes us to visit Vermont's Dog Mountain, a place where dogs can run free and humans can grieve lost pets. If Dog Mountain were just a joyful place where dogs can run around or plop into a nice pond, it would still be pretty special. 150 dog-friendly acres in the scenic hills of northern Vermont. Yeah. But there is much, much more to this story. It's actually a real tearjerker. Sweet, but sad. That's all coming up right here on Here Comes the Sun. Television personalities Nick and Vanessa Lachey's relationship sparked in 2006, and it's burned pretty brightly ever since. They sat down with Jonathan Vigliotti to explain why co-hosting Love is Blind is a dream come true, and it's good for their own romance, too. From Hollywood, the dating capital of the world, in color, it's The Dating Game. <laughs> America's love for television love is one for the ages. Let's bring her on stage right now. When the dating game first beamed into homes in 1965, you're gonna have to select a date from three gentlemen sight on scene. It was love at first sight, at least for the show's passionate viewers. All right, number three, if you gave me your best good night kiss and I told you it wasn't good enough, what would you say to me? Well, I would definitely convince you that I have a better one. In the years and decades to follow, there would be spin-offs by different names. Welcome to Love Connection. With new pickup lines. Hey, Antonia, will you go out with me? And eventually, new rules of attraction. It seems like he's having this amazing relationship with all these girls. From dating 25 people at once. Anastasia, we accept this shows. To getting married first. You may kiss your bride. And asking questions later. Where are you from? Louisiana. Really? But in the family tree of dating shows. This is the biggest decision of my life. There's nothing quite like love is blind. I've met the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. The Netflix series where singles mingle behind walls before deciding to pop the question. Will you marry me? <laughs> Sight unseen. So eight weeks from hello, hello to, to I do. I do. Yeah. That sounds insane. It does. And you're probably like 100% of the people who sign up for the show. And then in the end, they're like, man, I'm a believer. Husband and wife celebrity hosts Nick and Vanessa Lachey call Love is Blind a new take on an old way of courting. Welcome to Love is Blind. What I think is so fascinating is it's how love used to be. People used to, like, mm. if we're going back, back, it's sending letters, and then it was letters and a phone call, and you always courted this person. And there's just conversation. I mean, you, you get to know someone so intimately, so quickly. I remember specifically someone saying, I dated this girl for three years, and I've already talked to people in 
these walls more than I have with my girlfriend of three years. I'm here to find my wife. Once engaged, Whoa. participants in what producers call a social experiment oh meet God. each other's friends and family before walking down the aisle. For some, the real world is too much. You have single-handedly shattered my self-confidence. But six couples have gotten married. When you take one of the senses away, your others are heightened. I think you feel more, you listen more, you're forced to listen because you can't watch them and get distracted by them. And they're, you know, whether it's a, a wonky eyebrow. <laughs> I mean, or like every now and then a I have a wonky like, eyebrow. <laughs> or if he's like checking out like her cleavage or whatever it is, that's all taken away. When you hit those challenges, the idea is that you can rely and fall back on that incredible emotional connection that allowed you to propose that to someone. That allowed you to get there. You never have, you know, you never I, saw before. The Lachey's have hit their own speed bumps on the road to love. Nick Lachey. Vanessa Manillo. They yeah. first met in 2003, yeah. then just friends. Nick was the lead singer of the boy band 98 Degrees and married to fellow pop star Jessica Simpson. The couple even had their own reality show. Hey, Vanessa was a VJ on MTV's Total Request Live, where Nick often appeared as a guest. I'm so excited for this album to be out. I hope everybody out there went and got it. In 2006, after Nick and Jessica Simpson went through a very public divorce, Nick and Vanessa's chemistry changed. So now we're both single. He told me we have the same birthday. I'll never forget. We were and in New York, and I was like, Hello, Nick Lachey. <laughs> it just, it just all came together. And then I thought, what better way to make sure your music video gets played on TRL than to ask a VJ <laughs> to star in your music video? So, so romantic. That romance really picked up on their first official date. It was like 11.30 at night and I had come from work. He had been performing. He's like, you want to get a bite to eat? The only thing open in Trenton, New Jersey at 11.30 at night was Hooters. So that is our love story. I'm afraid to ask, what did you order? Well, everyone knows they have the best, best wings. wings. <laughs> Those wings, take note, Valentine's, eventually led to marriage in 2011 and three children. When producers from Love is Blind asked the couple to host the show together, they say there was no hesitation. They made literally our dreams come true in terms of being able to work together being able to spend time together, making our marriage stronger ultimately in the end. So 15 years, long time for any couple. Couple in the spotlight. I mean, that's a hanging lifetime. On. Yeah, and like, it's hanging on it's for like dear dog life. years and like celebrity years. We've been together <laughs> for like a thousand, right? <laughs> dog years. The Lachey's say compromise has helped them hang on. Like when they moved to Honolulu in 2022, so the family could be together while Vanessa taped NCIS Hawaii, the CBS show she stars in. Jane Tennant, special agent in charge, NCIS Hawaii. Another key comes straight out of the show they host, communication, which is why they started seeing a marriage counselor. I have to work at how I communicate with him. He has to work at understanding me and how I've changed and evolved. And we have to work at putting each other first. And as our therapist says, turning towards each other, not just physically, but emotionally. I think like anything that's meaningful in your life, it's worth working at. That work has paid off. Like how the couple now takes turns answering questions. <laughs> What's that? This is how we, yeah, yeah. Decide who's doing the chore of answering my question, okay? <laughs> oh! Okay, you can do it. In love. I hardly ever win. That's, that's a big moment. And marriage. In real life and yes, even on TV. All right, come here. I just want to hug you. No, no, no. I'm okay. Hugging the wall. <laughs> Sometimes it's the little gestures that matter most. Love is blind and love is a lot of things. <laughs> love is work and it should be a fun job. Good luck. Good love. It should be something that you're excited to work at. Up next, an exclusive excerpt from Nick and Vanessa Lachey's chat. You can only see right here on CBS News Streaming. Stay with us. As promised, here's more from Jonathan Vigliotti's conversation with Nick and Vanessa Lachey. 11 years later, you know, 11 still, years married, still together, so. 16 years later, because there were those five years that you didn't propose. 
Not that I'm I was bringing that <laughs> easing up. Into it. Easing and, into it. Easing into it. And those years matter. <laughs> yeah. Those years matter. So tell Big me time. how you really feel. <laughs> Honestly, those five years were were really beneficial for us. Because um, it's like they always say, like, sow your wild oats before you get married or, like, do all your partying before you settle down. You should also date and get to know each other before you mm. get married. And when we did get married, finally, after dating for five years, we knew. And we were ready. We had lived together. We had talked about finances. We had talked about babies. We had talked about family. We had talked about work. We had talked about everything that we could. Covered it all. Everything that we could. And we were ready. And so now it's like, it's literally the next chapters after that. Um, I do think that it's beautiful for people who, on the dating shows, find each other very quickly. Mm. But I think that the harder thing for them to do, well, it's twofold. One is they have to figure out all those things that we figured out in five years of dating, like the shows that that get married right away. They have to figure that out while they're married. So I wonder what that does psychologically to them thinking, I don't have an out. Not that you should ever think that, but it is like a saving grace. If you're not married to someone, you're like, okay, like this isn't my forever. But once mm -hmm. you're married, you are committed. Can't believe that I called them contestants, but some of them, it's like a game yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. They are thrown to the wolves before they're ready, I think, sometimes. And in this day and age, we've talked about this, with social media and press, not only are they thrown to the wolves together, they're thrown to the wolves for the world to chime in and give their two mm. cents, and that's really hard. Like, that's why I believe celebrity couples hide relationships or pregnancies mm -hmm. or, or big work changes. It's not so much that they don't want to tell you and share, they're excited. Who's not excited yeah. to have a baby or get married? they know that they emotionally can't handle the two cents of everybody. And so they have to build up that armor and know this baby is okay, now I'm gonna share it with the world. This relationship, we've got all of our like, dotted our I's and yeah. our T's, now we can share it with the world, it's scary. What made you think of marriage counseling? Why did you need to start marriage counseling? I think it's, it's just smart for everybody to do. I mean, it, there's- What was the day? I remember the day, you remember the day. When we decided to do it? When, well, and it, it's very sweet, you did. Oh, oh I said, I, yeah, I think I said, we can, we can be unstoppable if we get out of our own way. Get out of our way. own way. But I think it's hard to do that. You need that third party to kind of help you get your pers you know, perspective and help you see what's, what's really happening. Because when you're in it, and you're, we're both very passionate people, we're both Scorpios, we have the same birthday, and so like sometimes it's, we can't really get out of our own way, and it was important to, to have that uh, third party to, to help you kind of see what, what's really going on and um, maybe look at things through a slightly different lens. Um, and, and we, you know, it's maybe not for everybody, but we've always tried to share, you know, and be as open as we can with, hey, this is not time to tell you what to do. We're, we, we certainly don't have it all figured out, but this is mm. what's worked for us a little bit. Maybe it can work for you as well. How long ago was that when you first started? That was six months before he proposed to me. Before proposal, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's continued through. Yep, and we've only had. Two. We've gone through a few of them. Just two. <laughs> <laughs> Ten, fifteen years ago, I'm sure we could even go back five, six years ago. Did, did you ever picture yourselves in this role, in this landscape, in this genre? No. I, it's funny because, and I, I can't speak for you on this, but the question has come up before, not so much specifically about this genre and this role that we have together but just where did you see yourself? And I'm just a firm believer, or at least it's what worked for me, in manifesting more general, my health, my happiness, and however that is defined. Um, my relationship, my marriage, being a mother, and however that's defined. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know then that this job has given me and my marriage so much strength and it's gonna choke me up because it's hard being, it's, ah, I'm just so grateful to Netflix for giving us this opportunity to do this together because I don't think that, I know nobody gets this opportunity to work with their partner on a show about love. I get to hear from him, even talking to you, how much he loves our love and I will never take that for granted. Up next, a paradise for dogs, present and past. Welcome back. Vermont's 150-acre Dog Mountain opened back in 1995. It's a place where dogs can run free. 
but the property also has a dog chapel. And that's a place where humans can pay tribute to their dearly departed furry friends. Here's Martha Teichner. Look, it's me. Girly, come on. If you want the treat, you have to sit. Sit. Ah, <gasps> good girly. And my dog, Girly. Hey, Girly. That's a perfect name. Look at that. Dog, dog Mountain, having a good time on a beautiful fall day. Look at his tail, Girly. If Dog Mountain were just a joyful place where dogs can run around or plop into a nice pond, it would still be pretty special. 150 dog-friendly acres in the scenic hills of northern Vermont. But there is much, much more to this story. It's actually a real tearjerker. Sweet, but sad. It began in 1994, when artist Stephen Hunek was injured falling down a flight of stairs, his injury causing him to develop a rare, often fatal, lung condition. I was dead for like five minutes, not breathing. And I was in a coma for over two months, and they really pretty much wrote me off. Hunek and his wife Gwen, more than a decade ago, reliving the nightmare. I said to myself, well, I'm going to be positive. I'm going to believe he's going to get better. And he did. I had to learn to walk again, and my dogs really took care of me. We would go for short walks in the woods, and they really stayed right with me. His dogs became the subjects of the now famous woodcuts he was finally strong enough to make. His black lab, Sally, featuring in a series of best-selling children's books he wrote and illustrated. And then came his vision. I remember the moment perfectly where I had this idea popped into my mind, was build a chapel for dogs and for people. He built it himself with this sign out front. There are carved dogs everywhere, even a dog angel on top of the steeple. There are dogs inside, some real, some not. The chapel opened in 2000 and is, more than anything, a room full of love. It's overwhelming. It makes me happy, despite crying, to come back and see. And I, I feel like this is a place that they're buried and that we come back and visit every year. Every inch of every wall, floor to ceiling, has been covered with layers and layers of photographs and messages people have left, mourning the dogs they've lost, and the occasional cat, missing them. Heather Berkey drove seven and a half hours from outside Philadelphia to honor her Vishla, Lexi, who had died a few weeks before from cancer. She brought some of Lexi's ashes to spread. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lexi. To have her up here and free. I don't know. Does it help? There's no words. <laughs> How many places are there where society lets you grieve for a dog with all your heart the way you would a person? The way I have dogs in my life. <laughs> Do you believe that dogs go to heaven? I would like to think yes. Susan Oladol is an Episcopal priest. I come here almost every day. I volunteer here. Whose ministry includes comforting people at Dog Mountain. Stephen Hunick has a great whimsical piece of art that's entitled, A Dog Has a Soul and the dog is holding the shoelace with a shoe attached. For all the humor in his work, Stephen Hunek struggled with depression. Here's the sad part of this story. Afraid he would have to close Dog Mountain and his gallery as a result of the Great Recession, in January 2010, Hunek died by suicide. Three years later, his wife Gwen took her own life. You have a place of joy, you have a place of love, but you also have 
the suicides of mm -hmm. Stephen and Gwen. Mm -hmm. How do you square that mm -hmm. with the, 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 mm -hmm. the wonder of the place? Mm. I don't think they're to be squared. It's only a piece of a story. And the story of what they have left behind, this gift, is where most other people and myself are greatly impacted by. The Hunix dream lives on. One of the things that the Hunix kind of realize is every little child that's ever fallen in love with the Sally books, when they get to come to Dog Mountain and actually meet the Sally, it, uh, it's one of those things that they feel so special. Amanda McDermott is creative director of Dog Mountain and the person who cares for the current Sally. So this is just like a postcard. Oh, it's beautiful up here. There was something so pleasant about that place. Even your emotions have an echo in so much space. Three times a year, Dog Mountain has a party. I'm looking for some dancers out in the crowd today. touch. But it wasn't because it didn't Hundreds of dogs and their people show up. It was a free to all, free for all. Whoops, I'm sorry. Girly! But in spite of all the playful chaos, I managed a quiet moment to slip into the chapel and find a place to leave my message, to tell the dogs I've lost, that I love them still, and hope that wherever they are, they know. I'm Lee Cowan. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right here next time on Here Comes the Sun.